Hello, and thank you for filling your ears with the Rocker Dog Podcast, the only podcast that talks to people in and around the music business about their canine companions. I'm your host, Tim Dill, along with my golden child and doodle, Charlie, and this week we welcome to the show Tarias Steffensdatter Bjork, a renowned rock photographer who's shot practically every major act out there like Metallica, The Foo Fighters, Nine Inch Nails, and dozens of others. She's based in Sweden, and this is her photogenic rocker dog. Yeah, so my dog is an adopted dog from Russia. Her name is Laika uh, oh. for two reasons. Both the Russian dog Laika that they send up in the space. Okay. And uh, Laika, the camera brand. Okay. So it's a double. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. And she's a mixed breed. I did a DNA test. She's mostly Golden Retriever. Then she's German Shepherd. Uh, some... Uh, well, I don't even know the word in English for that kind of dog. A smaller dog, anyway. And then it's a whole bunch of other stuff they couldn't even find. So okay. she's she's a dog. That's her breed. <laughs> Is there any story behind the whole Russian connection? Like, how did how did you end up rescuing a Russian? Um, I have to say it was before the war. Um, I'm not a fan of that. Right. Um, no, I just I just searched for a dog for me, and I was on all of these pages that had uh, dogs that you can adopt to Sweden. And I found one initially, but it was a few people ahead of me and and they found one that they thought fit better, uh, a family with kids. And so I, after that, I kind of felt like I wanted to give up because I looked for so long. And then I just saw this dog on a Russian page. They also have Ukrainian dogs that she happened to come from uh, Moscow. Okay. Um, and I just, it was just my dog. I just felt it was my dog. What was, what were you looking for that took so long? Were you just looking for something that the... Both one that could, because I didn't know where, where I was going to live. I wanted, I was living in a flat then. So I wanted a bit, a smaller dog, but mm-hmm. still a dog dog I didn't want it too small and I don't I don't really know I just felt like somehow I will I will know when it's the dog I could have adopted all the dogs I saw um but yeah. I, I felt that I needed to be a bit restrictive and and it was it was my first dog so I thought I'll see if I can find one that maybe not a border collie that requires loads of, yeah. of you know 10 miles a day of walking <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i didn't that that doesn't really fit my lifestyle and i also thought oh it needs to be a dog that can be at my parents and they can take care of it when i when i travel for work etc but of course it's hard to to um when when you adopt a dog you never know yeah um, but you can read about the kind of if they're if they're a bit you know calmer or if they're crazy dogs or if they they have a little bit of a a like a, a text about it so you can you can kind of find what you're looking for yeah uh, she grew though a lot more uh than i thought she would they were like oh she's finished now she's about this high and she became a lot bigger than i thought right <laughs> that didn't matter. did you prefer a boy over a girl or a girl over a boy i don't think i don't think that i really thought about that i i imagine maybe a boy mm-hmm I've always imagined I always feel like playing as a kid I like playing with boys mm-hmm. um, but my parents have had two dogs before and they've been girls so okay it felt natural it didn't really matter now did you grow up with those dogs or did those did your parents get dogs kind of after you were out of the house no I know I grew up with them yeah so I, okay. I've had dogs around me but they I've never had my own dog right and were you at a point in your life, I mean, much like me, I, you know, graduated college, you know, went to New York City, lived in a really small apartment, you know, worked all the time. It just was not feasible to have a pet, you know, until I came to a point in my life where I had kids, I moved to the suburbs and then it's like, all right, you know, bring it on. Was that a similar experience? Yeah, I think so. I lived in um, Gothenburg in an apartment for for many years and I felt I didn't really have anyone around me because I'm not from there and I didn't have anyone around me that I felt could like be the safe place for for a dog if I and I travel a lot being a photographer it's 
yeah I feel like I was in one place enough time to to have a dog but now with the whole covid and it's you know finance problems and everything uh, going on I uh, now rent a part of my parents house mm -hmm. while looking for a house but this is the perfect place for my dog because my parents lost their dog right before I got mine so okay. it's kind of Filling a little bit of a hole, so it's a little bit their dog as well. Uh, and I, I have a lot of land here; she can run around, and it's it's just it's perfect. And they can help me whenever I go somewhere. Okay, that's nice. There I'm sorry go. if I missed this in the beginning. How long have you had Leica? I've had her for oh my god, um, time two, three, three years. Three years. Oh, okay. Time passes so fast. She's four now. Yeah, she came when she was one. Wow. Okay. And what did you, you said there, you, there would be a little bit, a little bit of information about her past. What did you know of her past? Was she part of a bigger litter? Was she rescued off the street or was she giving it, given up? It was a little bit unclear to be honest, yeah. but they said yeah. that she lived in a family and someone came and dropped her off and she lived in the, in, you know, that kind of environment with all the other dogs for quite some time. Uh, but I've noticed she's really scared of something. She's scared of everything, but she's she's cautious. She's, uh, you know, but of feet, I think she's been kicked. It's kind uh, of, you, you know, you can read your dog. Everyone can yeah. read their dog after a while when you get to know them. And it's something when the, you know, when I lie on a couch and she's at the bottom, she sometimes she's like, oh, no, it's too close to the feet now. Even though she trusts me and she trusts, you know, everyone here it's just something that's still with her yeah or something happened. that's sad given that you know the golden retriever is just the epitome of such a friendly loving dog yes so um being a photographer one thing i noticed on your instagram which obviously i gravitated towards and you know when it was brought up that you're interested in being on the show was that you take you've taken a number of pictures of rock stars with their dogs Yes. Um, I wish can you more. say again? I wish it was more. I do too. Yeah, you know, I, I wish it, if we well, can collaborate on that some way, that'd be great. Um, if, yeah, if we, but they don't would, bring them on tour so often. Yeah, I was going to say we have a continent between us and yeah, just the realities of touring musicians. But can you tell us a little bit of if there's any stories or context to some of these? And I'll just mention um, Nikki Six was with his dog. Um, you got Jay Buchanan of Rival Sons. It's funny. There's an artist, Ashba, DJ Ashba. Yeah, Did DJ I say Ashba. that right? Yeah. yeah. I'm not familiar with him. And I, you know, I'm the only one cause he's got a hundred and I'm sorry, hundred. He's got 1.5 million followers on Instagram. So I, I'm <laughs> a little bit off the grid on that. Now, are there any stories? Yeah. Surrounding those shoots? Well, when I came to DJ Ashba's house, he lives in uh, Las Vegas or outside of Las Vegas. Um, we're going to do an at home shoot. He's in 6 AM or was when they existed with the Nikki Six, and he also played in Guns N' Roses. Mm -hmm. And um, but it was very hard for me to focus on him because he had two very cute dogs. Was it three? He had dogs. Anyway, right. I was like, oh, dogs! And that that's my problem when I go to people's homes. It was the same with with uh, Jay Buchanan at his house. He had two uh, German Shepherds, and I was like kind of gravitating towards playing with the dogs instead of doing my job um which is yeah um so i, I guess it's good that I, people don't bring their dogs as right. much as i would have hoped because it makes my work harder uh, i'm a bigger fan of dogs than rock stars sure yeah <laughs> um and uh, yeah nikki six dogs are really i think the one i met was i think he has a dog name like it, doesn't he? I, I, I don't know. Now I'm just, I don't know if I remember correctly, but he has a, a golden retriever or several, but I met yeah, one he, of them. I've noticed he has a couple and he, it's funny, he makes some really poignant, well, not poignant, but he makes cute posts every so often when they're in the middle of a tour, he'll post the pictures of the dogs and say, we're missing the dogs, which is yeah. funny. It's like you're in the middle of a tour playing in front of tens of thousands of people at night and you give your dogs a shout out the next day on an Instagram post. So. That's what I think you missed 
the moat. Obviously, the kid, unless the kid is traveling uh, yeah, with yeah. him, but, but the dogs that have to be at home, that's when you're in front of all of these people, you kind of go back to think, oh, but my dog on the couch, you know, I I, I totally understand that. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he was with him uh, during the last, that was in Vegas and in LA, I think, but it was in Vegas. He had a dog for the, what we thought, were the last gigs with Motley Crue. So I did that shoot. I did the last shoot with him as a member of Motley Crue, but okay. not anymore. That was, <laughs> now that they're was, back on right. again. That was when was they were special. retiring under legal, they had like a legal thing that they were retiring for good, I think at the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think his home's in Wyoming. You said this is in Nevada, this is in Vegas? Yeah. This is okay. before he moved to, to Jackson. Okay, okay. I was going to say, how did the did he travel with the dogs? From all these artists, you know that I mentioned, do you see that affection? Were they very into dogs? Or were they dog people? I mean, I think I know that Nikki is, but what about um, DJ Ashba and and Jay Buchanan? Absolutely, dog people. And right. I find I find dog people to be very warm and loving people in general. Of course, not everyone. <laughs> there are probably some serial killers that have dogs, I'm sure. <laughs> but no, I just find that, and that's something that you can, um, you can always talk about dogs with yeah. artists. Sometimes yeah. I'm not interested, and, and with Nikki, we talk photography because he's also a photographer. Um, but that's just something that when you have that in common, it's like it's a little club. I'm sure yeah. you know it is. <laughs> it's a little club. Yeah, it's for sure. Very nice. It's uh, glad, yeah. glad to be a part of it and glad to take yeah. it to the internet and the podcast world. Yeah, that, it's a great initiative. Thank you. <laughs> so another thing I noticed looking through your Instagram and reading through your Instagram, there's times periodically you vent a little bit and you say you're frustrated and you're, you know, you're up against, you know, at the time it was COVID and work was disappearing and, uh, I think there was a couple of health struggles and creative struggles, you know, was, you know, was your passion turning into a job? And mm-hmm. the most recent post, you, you did that, I think, last year sometime. And you ended the post with, on a positive note, aren't dogs awesome? Yeah. <laughs> so that, remember, that asks but... a bigger question, you know, and a lot of times we talk therapy dogs or emotional support dogs, but it's obviously that you have some anxiety or frustrations. So how does your dog or how do dogs in general support your mental well-being? They just let you be who you are in whatever state you are. Um, my dog is great when I have uh, migraines, for instance. I struggle with some some pain and have fibromyalgia and, and uh, anxiety and a lot of things that I think artists have in general, to be honest. Right. Um, but she's just there. She understands and she just lets me be in that state. And I don't think she's like, okay, I'm going to be supportive now. But she is. Right. And I don't know. It's just, I think that everyone, especially artists that are that deal with people coming up to them and saying they love them and stuff all the time and also talk <laughs> about them. Uh, I think that they feel really comfortable with their dog or dogs not giving up. Right. They just, they don't care who you are. They don't care if you're if you're the singer of a massive band. It's it's you know you are their master. It, do, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I think it's, un- it's unconditional. Uh, yeah, yeah, unconditional, and that's what what I feel. She's done a lot for me uh, when it comes to feeling both both uh, mentally and physically Mm -hmm. i've had i've had artists say in in the same subject that a dog is something they have to care for so they can't let that be so they do get up out of bed and they do take that walk um which i totally get but i also me personally i was i also and i've tried to get this answer from other guests (laughs) i look at my dog as an inspiration because the way he rolls with it the way he lives in the moment, the way he doesn't let things out of his control control him. Mm-hmm. Do you ever do that? Do you ever use your dog? And it sounds strange to say, does your dog, you know, inspire you? <laughs> but 
But does your dog inspire you in any yeah. way, shape, or form? She does yoga every morning. <laughs> she gets up and stretches, and I'm like, yeah. oh man, I should do that too. <laughs> the the so, downward dog, yeah. Yeah, and and getting out of the bed thing. I mean, I have I have to walk her. So even if it takes me a few hours to like, okay, mentally get into, I'm going to walk outside when I'm in this kind of a bit social anxiety kind of state that I, I still have to. So it absolutely helps me to have a dog that mm -hmm. needs me. Um, so I think, well, I need her, but obviously she also needs me for food and love and yeah. other things. Um, so I, yeah, definitely use my dog in that way. Okay. Okay. Um, do you have, when you got the dog, were you new to anything? Like, did you have to train it? Did you have to hire a trainer? Do you, does your mom or dad know how to train or like, how did you, how did you bring your, the dog into the environment and kind of help her adapt? Um, my parents said, go take, take courses with it. And I said, Nope, I want to do it myself because I want to do stuff myself and I want to make it harder than it should be. Uh, it was a big struggle uh, at the beginning. And I and I even, I remember asking my parents, when do you start to love your dog? Because I was, it was just like, it was just too much. I didn't, I didn't know how to handle it. What and then wasn't, I what wasn't clicking? It, it just, she was just, I don't know. We, I was too stressed and she felt that. I was too stressed. I wanted she to be, I wanted her to be fine. I wanted her to like not, be stressed and and I got stressed and being scared. She was stressed, so obviously she got stressed because dogs right. can feel those things. Um but when I asked my mom that she said, Oh, don't you don't you love her straight away? And I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> should should I love her already? It didn't it didn't take me long and I love her like more than anything now. So I realized what a stupid question that was, but it was legit at the time because it was a lot of struggles and her having had a past, not coming as a puppy. Right. I had to work against a lot of things, not just, I, I had to reshape some things and uh, now she's great. And I did stuff, everything myself. Um, of course, there are some flaws. Sometimes her ears don't work and she just run off, even though I tell her to come. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, but she's overall, she's a great dog. So yeah, we had struggles, but, but it turned out great and it's worth it. I realize it's worth a lot of work. Yeah. So it must've been the, were the first couple of days just totally chaotic. So chaotic. And when she arrived, they, they came on a boat and it was during COVID. I, I decided to get her and then COVID came and I was scared that I wasn't going to get her. Um, so they only had one driver driving all the way from Moscow and taking a boat over to Stockholm. It's very far. I think it took three days and they didn't let, he couldn't let the dogs out. So he came with, I don't know how many dogs it was, uh, 10 maybe in, mm -hmm. in a car. So they were really smelly. They had to go yep. in the cage. Yeah. Uh, and she was scared, obviously, from being in a car so long and on a boat and other dogs being there, also being scared. So it was first those things to deal with. And then, you know, trying to make her feel comfortable with and around me and, mm -hmm. and feel loved. And so, but but I saw there was, I Googled it and it was like a one week of a rescue dog, a month, three months. And then it said, like, this is what you will have achieved with your dog during this time. So it was quite comforting to read that okay after three months it will start to feel comfortable with you right i still recommend everyone to get a rescue dog but yeah it yeah is hard. it's hard getting a puppy as well well i think what we try to do is a, and i think what all the rescues try to do is really educate people because i think i think if you're not seasoned or you're not really into it you think oh a puppy's the greatest thing ever or a dog's the greatest thing ever but it, it takes work it takes a lot of Patience, but it takes structure and it takes training. But so worth it. it totally worth it. Totally worth mm. it. Did the timeline work for you? Did the Google timeline, did it match up pretty yes, much with yes. your experience? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it did actually. And it was just like, it was just comforting to see, okay, I, I it, it made me stress less mm -hmm. when I saw, okay, I'm because I'm a person that I want to achieve this now. It's the, I don't know, the ADHD maybe just kicking like, it's, I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it now. And if it doesn't work now, it's not going to work. 
then I just right. bought it. Abandoned it. But <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, it worked. It worked. So it was great. Good to hear. Now, are you liberal with her? Is she allowed like on the bed? Does she sleep with you or is she more of got her own, you know, her own space, her own crate? Well, first, I'd say two days. I was like, nope, no dog in the bed. She sleeps in the bed. She sleeps on the sofa. She sleeps in my parents' bed. She sleeps on their sofa. She's she's everywhere. She has beds everywhere. But at night, <laughs> she does sleep in her own bed. And oh, I haven't told her to, like, you have to be there. She, I said, you can be in my bed. That's fine. But no, she sleeps in her own bed or lies on the floor somewhere. That's good. It's too warm. She likes the cold, the colder floor. But no, she's she can be everywhere, but she keeps to herself. Or, you know, the times in the sofa when I'm watching something, she just comes and like, okay, cuddle me with a coming with her butt towards me and just, okay, cuddle me. And then she kind of falls <laughs> down and lies on me. Very golden retriever-ish. Yeah. And, and we cuddle and then she can walk away and be fine. Right. So, yeah. I'm pretty liberal. Yeah. Now, are you and your parents on the same page in terms of the dog? In terms of, I guess, what we were just talking about or anything else? Uh, yeah, they are. They are now. They were also, but they're very soft people, my parents. Very soft. They probably wanted to have rules at first, but then it doesn't really work. But yeah. they get more stressed when she runs off. I know she'll gonna, she's yeah. going to come back. They get more stressed and they have a little bit different ideas, but it works. Yeah. Well, once you see that cute face, you know, it's, it's like, no, no. How, how, can I, how can I keep you from doing anything you want to do? No, they're so good at that with their eyes. Suddenly oh, yeah. it's like a switch. They're like, ooh, meat, ooh, candy. <laughs> you know, it's the eyes that just switch on. It's amazing. <laughs> I wish I could do that. All right. Well, we wrap up every show with the Zoomies, and the Zoomies are five quick questions. So let's mm -hmm. let's go there. Question one okay. is: Do you kiss Laika on the mouth? She eats poo and licks herself. Um, so I try to avoid. Sometimes she kisses me on the mouth. <laughs> right. <laughs> nose is better around the nose. Okay. With that setup, I was like, "That's a hard no. A hard no." <laughs> Still, she's so cute. It's a some fun. <laughs> Yeah. Question two is if you could give her her own theme song, what would it be? Yeah, that was a really tough one. Or is there a song? Is I would say, is there either a theme song you could assign her, like this typifies who she is, or is there a song that when you got her was popular that reminds you of her? Every single love song is hers. <laughs> it's, yeah, I don't think about my boyfriend. I think about my dog. Nice. No, he will probably hear this. So I think about him half of the time. Um, <laughs> but I usually want to add that thing that's on TikTok and Instagram and everything that happy, happy guy. It's oh, a yeah. little <laughs> thing that yeah, kind of work, works for that's her. Funny. So, yeah. That meme. Yep. I know it well. <laughs> Question three is if Laika was to join the music industry, would she be more of a fan, a critic, a groupie, a roadie, or anything else surrounding that world? Oh, she's so soft. So I don't know if she would survive the music business. <laughs> <laughs> I think she would be a very soft artist, a, a soft singer with a just, you know, a soft persona. Okay. That's what she would be, yeah. Okay, is she a very gentle soul? Is very that how gentle you descri soul. describe her? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very gentle soul. Cute. Question four is, do you have a dog voice? Do you speak in a certain tone or a baby voice or a cutesy voice? To of course like I do. Of course <laughs> I talk like this and then cut the words in Swedish. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I really do. And it's so stupid because you make the words sound different than what they are. So it's really confusing for the dog she actually lifted her head and looked at me when i talked like that <laughs> is she yeah. is she trained in sweet swedish or english she's trained in swedish um my boyfriend speaks english but i'm trying to teach him to speak swedish to her so she knows a little bit of english when he talks it's just t tone of the voice really that she listens to can so. you give me an example of it doesn't have to be a command, but anything in like a cutesy talk in Swedish. Uh, yes, I can. <laughs> I should know what to tell her. Like a come here, come the babies. Oh, we can film over. Do this. 
<laughs> and what, what yeah, was that translated her babies, to? Which is baby. Okay. Uh, so she's my baby, which is also confusing to her because her name is Laika. So how far the time I say Babis. So, yeah. Did she have another name assigned to her from the, from the yeah. kennel? Yes, she had what? Bianca. Bianca, okay. But it sounded too hard for me. Yeah. I don't know. I wanted her to, I felt she was soft. And I don't know. I, I, I don't think that was her name even from the beginning. They just assigned her something. Sure. So she didn't really seem to know her name when she came. Yep. I thought it's it's okay to to change. <laughs> most people most people do. Yeah, I guess it. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but somehow it's the same. You know, naming a baby. You just sometimes maybe you have a name decided, and then you see the baby, and it's like, no, that's yeah. that's this name instead. Yeah. Somehow. Plus, it's something that's so personal. You just if it's going to be yours, you want it to make it. It makes yeah. it a little bit more your own. Yes. Okay. Last question is question five. And is there a dog organization or charity or the rescue or a vet or anybody that you just like to shout out for doing good for dogs? Uh, all of them. Like really all of them. I I support, I follow a lot of them. Soy Dog, for instance, that takes care of dogs in Thailand and Hundar Utan Hem in Sweden. And this one that was called Jag vill leva, which means I want to live. That's mm -hmm. the one that I adopted her from, and they're doing a, a great, great job. So all of the organizations that take care of dogs, I want to give a shout out to. For sure. Um, quick question. I know when I speak to artists that have tattoos, do you have any? You don't have a dog tattoo yet. I, I have a dog guess. tattoo. Do you? I have a dog tattoo. It's from my parents' old dog. We all went to my tattoo artist and got her paw. Me, me and both of my parents. Okay. So we have this tattoo. I have tattoos a little bit everywhere. Uh, but I'm thinking, should I do her paw or should I do her face? And is it silly to do a dog's face? But she's so cute. I could have that <laughs> on my board. So I, I haven't decided yet, but I will absolutely get her something, paw or, or face. Okay. Day. Well, be sure to post it on Instagram once that happens. Absolutely, we well, Tess, thank you so much for taking the time. It was a pleasure getting to know you and your dog. And uh, is there anything coming up in 2023 that you are like to promote or anything you look forward to? Um, yeah, I look forward to, I'm going to have, um, no, I'm not going to have a photo exhibition. I'm going to be a part of a photo exhibition in, um, in Sweden. It's called Halmstad and their culture museum. So I'm going to represent rock and metal in their music exhibition with a lot of different genres but they contacted me and asked if i could do the rock and metal scene with some oh photos. great so i'm looking forward to that and of course all the festivals coming up that i haven't been to for a few years now mm -hmm. due to covid and last year just being a little bit lazy <laughs> but it's, it will be nice to to get back to it yeah well that's great that's great well, best of luck to you again. Thank you very much. Hope you have a Thank great you. 2023 and beyond. You as well. Thank you for doing this. My pleasure. Thanks for coming on. All right. Thank you, Therese Steppensutter Bjork, for sharing your lovely Leica with us. Do yourself a favor and give her Instagram a follow at Steffensdotter underscore photography for some amazing images of dozens and dozens of top bands. The dog organization Therias is spotlighting is Zhogvi Lieva, which translates to I want to live and helps dogs from Russia and Ukraine. For more information on them, visit zhogvilieva.com. And I'm sorry if my pronunciation is off, but I'm doing the best I can. The other is Soy Dog, a truly amazing organization that provides a humane and sustainable solution to managing the stray population in Thailand and address their medical needs. They are also instrumental in fighting the Asian dog meat trade, which thanks to their efforts has been almost completely wiped out in Thailand. And they continue to campaign for an end to the trade and carry out rescue operations in the Philippines, Vietnam, Cambodia, South Korea, and other Southeast Asian countries where it is still prevalent. Visit soydog.org to find out more on how you can help. That's S-O-I-D-O-G.org. Thanks as always for listening. 
For more on the show and pictures of our guests and their dogs, follow us on Instagram at Rocker Dog Podcast. Subscribe to the podcast as well, and you'll never miss an episode like the one we had lined up next week, which we actually switched from running this week that we teased as two guitarists from a progressive metal band whose fans much prefer Instagram posts about their guitars and gear than of their dogs. So we will post that next week, and it's a good one, so please tune in. All right, I'm tired of my own voice, as I'm sure you are, so we'll see you next week. Goodbye, y'all.